Have you done anything wrong? No. Nothing at all. Um, I may, we may have um, some technical violations, I believe clerical, but I believe we've done. Other than um, bookkeeping and mechanical, I think we're, we're, I think we're in good shape. Do you see and, any and reason why you might have to give up your seat over this? No. Absolutely not. That was Republican Congressman David Schweiker to Fountain Hills after I asked him last week why he has had to spend more than half a million dollars to defend himself in a year-long House Ethics Committee investigation. The committee says there is, quote, substantial reason to believe he misused cash from his congressional office for campaign purposes. So... Can Schweikert survive this scandal? It's one of the top political questions of the week. Joining us to answer them in our left-right debate, Lorna Romero, Executive Director of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Chamber of Business News. She's also a former spokeswoman for Senator John McCain and policy advisor to Governor Jan Brewer. And Roy Herrera, an elections attorney at Ballard and Spar and a former staffer for Democratic Congressman Ed Pastor. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Disclosures first, Roy, uh, you are working for one of the candidates opposing David Schweikert. That's right. I'm representing Harold Tupernini. Okay, that's out there. Good. Congressman Schweikert says he spent, or he has spent, $580,000 on legal fees because he has to go through more than a million emails, and lawyers and legal aides have to do that. He still maintains he's guilty of nothing more than clerical errors. You heard that. Roy, does that explanation add up? It doesn't to me, and I say that as an attorney. I mean, anytime you see hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of legal fees, one of two things are happening. One is the attorney is fleecing the client, or two, the attorney is doing a lot of work for the client, and I think the latter is the case here. We don't know exactly what the ethics committee is looking at, but if an attorney is spending that much time trying to get through that investigation, it's likely that there's something serious there. We don't know what it is, but it's likely to be serious. Uh, it is odd that for clerical errors, um, alleged misuse of, of office funds, you're going through all these emails. Lord, Lorna, if this stays alive into 2020, how big a drag would it be on David Schweikert in the campaign? Do I think it's helpful? No. Do I think this is going to be the single issue that could take David Schweikert down in his district? I don't think so. I think the larger issue here is this is probably going to put you know, Congressman Schweikert in a position where he has to run a real campaign. He's been fortunate enough the past few election cycles where he really hasn't had a challenger, whether it's a primary challenger or someone in the general, where he has to significantly fundraise and build a strategic campaign. So I think with this, regardless of what the outcome is, um, he's going to really have to defend his seat. But I don't think this is going to be the single issue that takes him down. There's some changing demographics in the suburbs of the Phoenix area that I think are probably more concerning than this issue in itself. Interesting. Okay, Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema broke with her party when she voted to confirm William Barr as Attorney General. She told me Barr gave her all the right answers to the questions she asked him. But will Barr's handling of the Mueller report give her a little indigestion? She hasn't spoken yet. She wants to read the whole report first. Will that vote to confirm Barr haunt Sinema? at some point or just kind of fade into the rearview mirror? I don't think so. I think people have tend to forget that cinema was elected to a six year term. Six a, years. Six years, that's a long time. And especially in nowadays with the news cycle changing 24 hours, I, a few months from now, people are going to forget about this. She ran as a centrist, and I'm going to say Democrat, even though she didn't really, you know, uh, say that she was a Democrat in any of her campaign materials, but she ran as a centrist. She is voting the way that she said she would. So this is not a surprise. So I think it would be a mistake for Democrats, because obviously Republicans aren't gonna attack her on William Barr, for Democrats to attack her when she is probably the best thing that's happened to Democrats in a while in the state of Arizona. Well, Democrats have this one is pretty tough to take when they see the Mueller report, she's been quiet and she voted for the guy. How much indigestion does this give you, Roy? I'm going to use your term. I think I think it's the handling of uh, the Mueller report by uh, the Attorney General Barr should give all the senators indigestion. I mean, let's think about what happened uh, this last week. We essentially had the Attorney General of the United States, who's supposed to represent the people of the United States, essentially go before the public and act as if he was the criminal defense lawyer for Donald Trump and completely mislead what was in the Mueller report. And so I think going forward, every senator has to really think about whether uh, Attorney General Barr can continue in his job and whether he's independent enough to continue in this job. 
And what about cinema? <laughs> you got a problem with her? Well, with her voting to confirm him? I mean, generally speaking, you know, you defer to the president's selection for their cabinet. That's the sort of traditional way of doing things. I think certainly in an academic sense, was he qualified to be attorney general? The answer was yes. He used to be attorney general back in the early 90s. But I think how he's handled this Mueller investigation and in showing that he's completely non-independent and completely just there to basically cover for Trump has to be a concern for everybody going forward because that is not the job of the attorney general. Quick response. But I do think it's a larger issue of how are Democrats going to handle it within their own within their own party? Are you going to attack your own six years from now over something that people aren't really going to remember just because you're unhappy with a vote that she made? Okay. I don't think that's wise. Quickly, want to go to Yuma. The mayor there, Douglas Nichols, declared a city emergency last week. Their one shelter is overwhelmed by migrants being dropped off by Customs and Border Patrol. For both of you, what is the one thing anybody, the president, governor, Congress can do right now to help the city of Yuma. I, I think, you know, I give major credit to Mayor Nichols for making the decision that he did because obviously there's a strain of resources along the entire border for cities that are d dealing with the migrant issue of those seeking asylum and then also the, the extended wait times that are ports of entry. We need resources and we need people to work together to address this issue because, as we like to say, this is really an issue of immigration, border security. All this is meeting and intersecting at once in international trade and commerce. We need people just to work together and find solutions and not just pontificate about it. Right. I mean, I agree. Some of this is that we need more resources down there, but I think we need resources for the right reasons, not resources to go build a wall down there, but resources to deal with the people that are coming to this country and really thinking through why are they coming to this country? Because they are coming here in their home countries dealing with political persecution, economic disparity, all of that. That's why they're coming here, coming here for a better life. So the other thing that President Trump is doing is cutting aid to these very countries that these people are coming from. So if we talk about how to solve the problem, that is not going to help solve the problem. All right, got to end it there. Lorna, Lorna Romero, Roy Herrera, thank you so much for joining us. When we come back, Phoenix's elections aren't over. We'll meet the two candidates in one of the more interesting races on the ballot. Stay with us.